hello this is Lolly. I am working on a project right now in which I want to use I want to make a box for memory decks cards. Now this is the Heidi Swap box. I painted a spool and a bead gold and put them on each foot. But I want to make one just for Easter cards. So I don't think I need the eight inch length. I'm going to make a six inch one and I could do a five or four, but I think I want to do six. And um, that way it'll be smaller and more manageable and just for my Easter cards. And I'm going to use it for the cards that I made for my design team project in April for Antivirus Scrap and Craft. So um, I have semi watched <laughs> a few videos on making uh, your own box and it's kind of hit and miss. I've just kind of searched around within there, not really watched the whole thing. So I'm just kind of coming up with what's kind of a mixture of everything I've seen and what I want to do. So again, I'm going to give you the measurements, and this is a heavy, heavy chipboard, and as you can see, it's pretty thick. It's really thick, and so I don't have anything to cut mine, so I just use a metal ruler, and mine is cork-backed, and I like that because it doesn't slide around. And then I use um, a craft blade to cut my chipboard. So the base is four and a half inches wide, and this is six inches long. If you want a standard one, make yours eight inches long. Then two sides, which are one and five eighths inch wide, because that's the height, by six and one eighth. This is actually a teeny bit longer than the base. It extends out on either way. If you are doing the full length size, it would be eight and one eighth. And then for the rest of these, these are the same size, no matter which size, um, memory dex box you're going to make. These are one and five eighths by four and a half. So four and a half, one and five eighths. Okay, and I painted mine and the only reason is that I was thinking, you know, when I join it and paper it, if there's any gap showing, I don't want chipboard showing. I wanted paint, that, you know, a color. It may be a problem with adhering the double-sided tape. We'll see if it is. I will just use another adhesive in between this and this. We'll see. And then I have this cardstock. You see it's not a perfect match, but that's okay. Um, I'm still going to go with it. I just did a light coat of paint all over and even on the edges of these. But on the, the ones that are going to be on the interior of my box, I did an extra coat. And the reason I said a light coat is because I didn't want to saturate this with um, the moisture and make it uh, really warped. So I just did a light coat. And then when it dried, I did another one on the inside. These are the hinges that will hold this together. So this is just a card stock and the measurements for these. They're all one and a half inch wide, no matter what the lengths are. So all these make a bunch of strips that are one and a half inch wide. These are six and an eighth, but if you're doing a full box, make it eight and one eighth. These are four and a half wide. So I'm sorry, two at the six and one eighth, two four and a half inch wide, oops. And then these are the ones that will go around the outside here. And so they are one and a half by one and five eighths. You need four of those for the four corners. Another thing that would be great would be to kind of miter your corners a little bit here like this, okay? And I will go off camera and do that. Okay, I've got all those mitered. Now, um, you, what I've used here is half inch double-sided sticky tape. I have already burnished it or smashed it down onto the paper so that hopefully it would stay better. One of the things I am considering too uh, especially because I had painted this and the tape might not stick well, is to just Mod Podge or decoupage it to the box. I think that would probably work out well too. So all we're going to do with these, I'm going to put each hinge on top of each side. Okay, and starting with one of these long ends, you can see that it sticks out a little bit on either end, just like a sixteenth of an inch and that is because to give you room for adding this piece in there. This should go around the end. So actually I'm going to start with a short end here. Okay, I didn't actually score these well in half. Okay, so we're going to do this, but we have to have room for this to get in there. So this will go against it. Yeah, you almost need another hand here. So this is actually going to be butted up right against this one, so I'm going to peel this tape first. And 
and get it against there really well. And then I will peel this tape and put it there. Now you notice in the center here, there's this gap where there's no adhesive at all. I think I'm going to squirt a little bit of glossy accents along there to adhere to both pieces of wood. Okay. Now we'll peel that off and put this up against the other wood. This is touching all the way down the table and we'll put this wood up against that wood, buttress it so to speak, and go around. We give that a hold for a little bit. Now the question is, is this tape sticking to the wood? So far it appears to be, but on the other hand I know too that I will cover this with another layer of paper on top of that. So that will also give me an extra boost to adhere that. Okay, now for this one. That way I can get these perfectly lined up and not have them kind of fall over like they're doing now. If I want to do this while glossy accents is still working. Okay, now I mentioned that these sides are a little longer than the base because they're going to go on the outside of these. I think if I were working really quickly enough and had all my ducks in a row, I could probably do this quickly without having to seal this back up, but I, like I said, I don't have much success with getting, <laughs> I'm not going to screw it, I'm just going to do that. Okay. And on this side, one more, we're getting there. I do want to try and make one of these later with the um, using the Mod Podge technique I had mentioned. Okay, now we're going to go around and do these, and I'm going to fold that first. Okay, now I said this goes on all the way to the end. Okay, it's not like this, it's like this. So I'm going to put this here first. Yeah, I can vouch for it sticking to the uh, painted wood. I'm also going to stick a little bit of this glue right in there and in here. You can probably, s I don't have time now to continually close my um, fine line applicator, so I'm just going to leave it and hope for the best. You may notice too, my hands are a little shaky today. Um, kind of comes and goes. So far my tape is pretty much cooperating with being able to peel off the edge. Okay, and two more. I love the fact that this tape is enabling me to, you know, let go and not have to hold the project for a long time. The one more, can she do it? Dee, 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 dee. Okay. And don't forget this. There, now I'm going to close this. Ta da! Now you'll notice that um, ee, the edges are painted. I could leave them like that. It has a bit of a rough look to it. Totally up to you. 
um, the bottom is painted and papered. I am still, you know, figuring this out as I go along, what I want to do with it. And I have thought about taking one long strip and going all the way across here, and, of paper, I'm sorry, and, and that could be done. You could go fabric around here. I could do individual pieces and go over, and I think that's what I'm going to do and kind of overlap this part. I'm okay with this raw looking edge here. I even thought about this. I have some fabric piping, and you know, it is actually split down the middle and to glue either side on the end of that and have this cute finished fabric edge and there would be really cute but it would be very fiddly and having to glue inside and outside and do it all on video i may try it on one of my other ones but for now i cut pieces to go around um, each of the four sides and i'm still going to put a border around that of the the paper from my kit so right now i'm doing this these are each two inches tall so that they can come over and overlap. But I, looking at this now, I think I would do it at two and a quarter inches. So don't do as I do, do as I say. <laughs> Make them two and a quarter inch wide. <laughs> and then the end pieces will be four and a half inch long and these will be six inches long. But if you're doing the long box, eight inches long. And I'm writing myself a note to remember to do it at quarter inch wide next time. I have some super wide score tape I'm trying for the first time. It's not score brand. And this is from Joann's. They had it in their um, $1.99 bin. And I thought it's worth a shot. It's nice and wide. And I, I love that about it because you don't have to put several. Um, it's a whole one inch tape. You don't have to put several strips on there at once. So I'm going to do that for the bottom and use wet glue across the top. Here's what I did. I just laid it down there flat onto the bottom of my craft mat. And I slowly just started scoring that with my fingers to get a nice crease because you know this isn't I can't score it in one place the uh, chipboard is wide and so I'm gonna have a score here and a score there you can see there's like two lines right there and so that's what I'm doing to just kind of get that where I want it to be and then peel and again this is flat on the on the table this is flat on the table and go up there I'm going to add wet glue and this is Scotch Quick Dry Adhesive. I might need to use um, the Glossy Accents instead because I am gluing this to wood and I really haven't tried to glue Scotch Quick Dry to wood before. So, you know, now that I'm thinking of it as I'm <laughs> going along, whoops, that one just popped right off of there. We'll see how this one holds. I can always go back with the Glossy. Yeah, okay, that's holding it down for me. We'll see if that holds. Now, I'm going to come around and do this end because I don't want to interfere with my clips here as it's drying. And let's close that up. <clears throat> and next one, I'm going to put this down there flat. Start slowly. I'm holding this down. I'm not just pushing down without supporting it with my hand. off and I think I wonder if I should try this while it's not attached let's see if this I'm afraid of not having room to be able to hold on to this if I glue it ahead of time but we'll try Ooh, that's loud probably should use the glossy accents without the tiny little nozzle for this part okay it doesn't take a whole lot because glossy accents is pretty liquid and it will squish everywhere. There we go. And clips, clips, clips. Then I'm thinking I would let this stay let this dry for a good 15, 20 minutes before I come back and do the side pieces, the long side pieces. Okay, I went ahead and glued the long sides on using the same method that I already showed you and to save time I just did it off camera. So here's what we have now. We have a nice smooth edge over this instead of the rough edge. And I went ahead and cut a piece of this four and a half by six. If you do the long one, it'll be four and a half by eight. And I decided to go ahead and line the inside. And I started with a four and a half by six, and it will fit on the inside, but I just think that is too adorable. And watch me not get it out of there. <laughs> here it comes. Okay. So I am going to glue this in here 
and glue this on the bottom and I'll probably use wet glue for the most of it okay and also in the meantime I have uh, painted uh, wooden beads to be little stubby feet for this okay hold on okay so I've got that glued on the inside and this on the bottom now if you can tell but this is a these are glossy polka dots and it is the back side of this um, border print that I want to use on the outside now I love this and I started cutting it in strips and then I realized that some of the strips had yellow flowers and some of them have pink flowers all of them have that turquoise in there I think I use pink so much that I think I'm going to go with the yellow now I think this is going to be the front of my box and so I'm going to start here and go around and then I will have it joining on the sides and then going around the back. I just don't want to seam like right here on the front. So let's see, clip it and then see how, how I do when I go away all the way around and measure it when I get here to make sure I'm still the same distance from top and bottom. So I know I've got it right. I could also do light pencil marks so I know where to glue. And then I'll glue this section here and let that dry before I continue wrapping. Probably the best bet. And going around with this border will also give me a little extra uh, strength to the entire box. As it just continues to give more support around here. So let me move this over. I'm just going to let that sit for a minute. Scotch Quick Dry does work pretty quickly. Love it, love it. Alrighty. And then we'll start this one and overlap that one. I want to overlap it so the flowers are matched up. Let's see, okay, it's not going to line up completely with my flower over here, but it's pretty close, pretty close. And this was 12 inch paper, so the strips are all 12 inches long. I don't really know how tall they are because, like I said, I was just cutting a pattern out of paper. And it's just whatever size the pattern ended up being, which is a little over an inch. Not much, but a little over an inch. So that is so cute. I love that. That is very springy. Love it, love it. Okay, and these are the beads that I painted to be little feet. Whoops. And so I think that's just the extent of what I want for the little legs on it. Okay. And I think I'll glue those on last. So now for the dowel rod. For the runners, you need two dowel rods that are one quarter inch wide, and you need to measure them the width of your box. I mean the length. And I had said mine was six inches. So I cut this at six, and then you, you, you test it to see if it's going to fit down in there right. And then I sanded it with the grain, and this is an oak one. I know they have pine ones too, but I figured this is nice and strong. You can also run some beeswax around it to make it more smooth so your cards slide on it if you want. And then in order to get these to stay in here, one of the videos I saw recommended using two uh, pieces of chipboard that are one by two inches. And if you do that, then you measure in, uh, is it half inch on each side? Yes, and put those lines there, and then that, that's where you're going to put your holes. Now. You can put your holes, you can put a card down there, and then you need to pull this up just a pinch so that your cards are up off the bottom of your box, and then you can mark the top there, and that's where you put the top of your holes. Now my hole punch that cuts through chipboard um, smoothly is this two hole punch, but it's a little harder to see where I'm headed. But I did work with it, and I could, I could get it figured out. And I am going to put this in there, and I can center my line right under one of those punches there. Come down on that, and then do the other one. There. And all we have to do is look and see if those are centered, and they are. Okay, I'm going to do the other one the same way. 
this is so much easier than what I was trying to do before. And my uh, Crocodile um, Big Bite that um, cuts through chipboard, it's not a quarter inch. It's 3 16 inch, and so it makes it just too small for a dowel rod. Okay, so make sure they fit. They do very snugly. And you've got a couple options here. Oh, and this just happens to put them at the right distance where I want them. It's really cool the way this makes it. The two-hole punch makes these elevated just high enough. So you would glue these in right in the center in here. I think I'll flip it around this way so that my pencil marks are in the back. And same thing with this. Okay, make sure you can see mine uh, is a little wider at the bottom than on the top, and that wide part is going down. I'm going to glue them here and here. And then these will snap in. And I just realized that I only cut one instead of two. So off I go to cut another one. I have glued those in there. They are centered, which means since this is two inches and the inside is approximately four and a half, that you have about an inch and a quarter on each side. And I used um, the glossy accents to glue that in there, but you can use your E6000 or whatever you would like to use on that. And then the next thing would be to get these in there. You could paint them if you wish. Um, I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave them natural. And one thing I think I want to do is put a dot of E6000 in each of these holes once I get it open. And that will help my dowel rods to stay in place. I have a little piece of scrap paper here that I can catch my drips in that hole, in that hole, and in this hole. You know, it takes a while to dry, so you've got some drying time here. I mean, you've got some time to fiddle around. Okay, so put them in there. Make sure I'm in camera. Put them in as far down as you can get them, and then just slide them down into their spot here. There you go. Now I'm going to push gently on the box to make sure they're seated in there and close this before it goops all over the place. So that's that in a nutshell. If you have any excess glue sticking out, now's the time to kind of get some of that off of there. You don't want a big ball of it. Looking good. But I'm going to put my feet on the bottom here. And I'm just, you know, you could measure everything, but I think I'm going to use the lolly method of just eyeballing and stick these each in the corner. So just looking around and see what kind of little wooden items that you have that might make really cute feet. And then I am going to have to leave this alone because you know <clears throat> I won't be able to play around with it while it's drying. It takes E6000 a good time. 24 hours is the total time for it to set up permanently. Um, but within 20 minutes, you know, you can touch it. I just wouldn't want to put any pressure on it in any way that's going to cause them to pop off. It's all dried now, and I am really happy with how this turned out. I was able to clean up my craft area now, since I'm not going to be using all the heavy glues and everything. Turned out really cute. Let me compare it again in size to this one. And you can see there, the length is much more on, it's supposed two inches more on this gold one here. And again, I didn't want this one to be that big. So I think it's a really cute little chubby box. But I did think I want to do something on the front here. So I'm. these are the bunny silhouette dies that are in the kit. And I just thought they would be so cute on the front here. Just kind of up front and center there. I just did a lavender and a pink one there. I did a little distressing around the edge just to pop, make them pop a little bit. And then I cut out, I fussy cut out the Happy Easter, which was a rubber stamp. And I did a little um, coloring on it with the uh, Inks Tense colored pencils. I was just noticing a little bit here it needed to be trimmed up better. There. I didn't do a very good job of fussy cutting. Okay, so I'm going to peel this. I'm going to pop this up off of the box. And then we can get my cards put in there from Project One. Oh, I love it. There we are. Happy Easter. I love it. Okay, now these are the cards that I had made in the first project for this kit. And I'm going to start putting them in here. And I also had made 
the um, journaling cards as well. I guess I could put one behind there as well. There we go. A couple of these in no particular order. And more journaling cards. And this is why I made this a little on the, not as long as most of them would be because I knew that I was just going to use this for Easter. I wouldn't need to um, make it really full. Okay. Hard to say. I think I'll put ah, which one I want in front. This is that envelope that I made. Uh, put another journaling card in there. And I will give you the link to the kit so you can see what is in this kit. And I will also give you the link to the video where I show all these cards more closely up front. I think I'm going to make some more journaling cards even. Looks like I could. And this. And I think I want this one to be in front because I just love the way that the blue paper kind of brings it all together. Now, I see I still have room. I can put more journaling cards in here. Or... I can put in here the Easter cards I've already made before I even got this kit. Plenty of room for those. Bunny love. And happy Easter. And one more. Now it's really full. Okay. There we go. Is that lovely or what? Now look at that box full of spring goodies. It is so cute. And like I said, there's still room for journaling cards, but I love, I think it's nice and full now. And as I make journaling cards, I could take a few of these out, but I just think it's so pretty. Look at that. Luscious, luscious spring colors. So be sure to check out all the links below this video in the description box. And thank you for watching.